We're going to keep this going today. We've got a 2019 um, Chevy Sonic. We don't get a lot of these cars in. We don't. I guess we don't sell a lot of these cars. Um, so I haven't tended one of these in a while. So I thought this would be a great opportunity uh, to show y'all some shrinking on this back glass. It's a little bit bubbly, so it ha may give y'all a little bit of um, information on tinting any of the host of uh, small hatchback vehicles that are out there that are very similar to these little cars, whether it be a Honda, a Chevy, Ford, whatever. Uh, just the idea of tinting one of these little hatchback cars. So, without further ado, first thing you want to do on this Sonic, it has a little plastic cup, uh, uh, nut cover, a nut cover that you that um, you just slightly ease off on one side and it'll pop right off. 13 mil. Just a slight tug up on one side, we'll, 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 we'll loosen it enough. You don't have to manhandle it by any means. We're gonna do a wet shrink, a full wet shrink on this window. Something this small, it's not that big of a deal. Get a good, clean squeegee on it. And these windows present a little bit of difficulty because um, now a lot of cars have these large wings, so getting up into the, the upper section of the window tent is it's not necessarily difficult, but it's really hard to gauge and look at uh, what's going on up underneath here. So I figured that'd be a good opportunity to explain it to y'all. Let me move the camera around just a hair. Up underneath this here. So you're kind of, I'm a little pressed for light in here. The, the, light, the shop light's not that good, but it's a little bit difficult to shrink up in this area. So I'm going to cut a pattern out for the, uh, for the Sonic. On this particular vehicle, I chose to choose the full tent. I didn't want to cut it out for the uh, for the brake light. I think it looks. I think it's just a a little bit of a cleaner look when you tint over the brake light. So when you're doing these hatchbacks, and obviously a lot of water will stay hanging out up here, um, I recommend don't. Don't douse them down so if there is any residual dirt up and stuff in there, you're not flushing it down into the into the glass that you just squeegee. See how after even after I squeegee, I got a little bit of water running down there. There's a good chance that there's a little bit of debris in there. So again, I'm just gonna lightly mist it. And these these hoses, you can you can choose to a, a thin squirt or obviously like you know more of a spray, a mist. So I missed it. I'm a mister. And instead of pushing this tin up there as far up as it'll go, I tend to like walk it down as far as it'll go downwards before it touches the wiper arm. When I'm happy with it, I've got it squared up there. 
I believe it's even. So I'm gonna come in as I do in every window, do a mild, mild card that way. I wanna push my tension on the sides up and then my tension on the, for the bottom and some tension down. This is a very small height wise window. try to make this video as short as I can guys but I'm gonna get it all in alright and it's okay if you decide to start at the top or the bottom no big deal it's 100% on you nothing saying that's right or wrong you can start at the top or the bottom Now one thing I can tell you is when you're blasting heat up in this area, it's gonna hold that heat. So what you're used to normally as a time being spent on those fingers, just be mindful of it because now you're almost creating this like little potential heat bubble up there that's it could be getting hotter than what you're normally used to. That heat has no place to just dissipate to it, so it'll just pretty much hang out up underneath there. Long stories. You may find yourself shrinking fingers a little bit faster. They shrink down a little faster just because of the condensed heat up in that area. Seen a lot of new guys burn tin up quicker up in that area. For me, it's kind of hard to see up in there, so I'm just doing my best to make sure I get all those fingers shrunk down up there. Where we're at in the camera. Let's rotate you guys around. It's hot. As I said, the better your shrink is out here, the easier your install is on the inside. I'd rather be out here fighting with something out here than while the tin is on the glass. I don't know if it's gonna pick it up in this video, but I've got a little booger right here at the end. That's where the tent decided to curl up because I got it hot. Uh, one thing I will tell you about those is just nib it off just a little bit because that's not gonna wanna lay flat that easy on the inside. So it's a very common that when you get heat on the edges, You'll, you'll get a little bit of a um, little, bit, little burn basically on the end. Don't, don't install it that way. You're going to just force yourself to sit there and try to heat the tar out of it to get it stuck down. Just, I'll, and I'll show you here in a second. Just nib it off real quick. Most of these patterns, and if you're hand cutting patterns, chances are you're going to overcut them just a hair. So you, got, you should make yourself space for that particular issue. And it's, it's gonna happen now and then when you're tinting back, when you're shrinking back glasses, 
that you're going to possibly burn the edges. Slightly burn the edges. It's okay. Nib that stuff off. When I say nib it off, I'm going to show you. And I'm going to zoom in on what I'm talking about nibbing off. Right here, it's got a very, it may not even show up, little, little bitty slight edge where it's gotten hot. So, now I can, sh I can stick that no problem, don't need to nib it off, but for the guys that are learning, go ahead and just come in, nib that off. That clean edge there is gonna lay down. Anytime you have an area that's a little rough, look, See how my finger's catching on that? Doesn't catch over here. Let me show you. If it's got enough of a nib like that where your finger's gonna catch on it, trim that little booger off of there. See this little finger? I'm gonna leave it there just to show you, see if I have to fight that finger on the inside. All right, we're gonna back up. We're gonna take this guy to the glass, and I'm gonna show you what it's what it's gonna look like installing that glass in a little hatch. We got this thing wet down. See what we look like back here. I want to get y'all up in here. Now you're looking at the upside of that glass. This black stuff that you're seeing around here, it is not tent friendly. Your tent does not want to stick to that stuff. So if you can get over here and you can clean that stuff, scrub it a little bit, as I'm doing now, I think it's gonna help you tremendously. But, you'll see here shortly, on these back glasses, I tend to run my, my, my heat gun around to just make sure I get all that stuff, that tent pinned down. Notice my long edge dip back behind that um, taillight. So I know I've got it squeegeed back there. Now here we go again, talking about this water. I'm just gonna mist it. I know I've cleaned it. Last thing you wanna do is blast water up there and all, all these edges bring some potential dust or debris, as I say, down into your window tent. So don't go crazy with it. Just a mist that you know you've got everything. And if you see, I just don't have water just running. Just a light mist. I'll bring my 
hose back in case I need it. It's ready, available, right there. Now I know I'm gonna have to dip back behind that brake light, so the first thing I'm gonna do is make contact on that glass so I can just start slowly easing it back behind that brake light, which we're, we're behind it. I'm gonna roll it up like I do. A lot of times what I do is I will pull my film down until I start seeing light around the top edge, or this is the bottom edge of the glass, but this is the top edge to me. And I'll pull it down so I can see light, so I know when I bump it up that I'm getting full coverage everywhere. So now I'm covered, covered here, covered there. And I know that once I ease over that edge all here, it's gonna be good down here. So this hand motion is just kind of lightly just dispersing everything in there. So as I always do, I will start off in the middle, get a squeegee down. Now you've seen I've separated one side to the other, okay? Hopefully this is gonna show up, but what I will do you see this little bit of tension that I'm putting on this deal, on this on this tent, you will see the, the bubble starting to spread out that's in there. So here we go. I'm applying tension going left. Good, hard squeegee to the left, right? So now, not only has it been shrunk, I've, I've done this initial pull. Look how clean that looks across there. So I've done this pull to get as much tension out also. I'm going to come back in. Another squeegee, another squeegee, there. Now this quarter section of the 100% is done. Same thing up here. Fifty percent of that window is done now. I'm gonna do the same over here on this right side. I'm gonna do that pull like I just told you about. So when I do the pull, you're gonna see all this stuff start to change. Look at those fingers. There we go. That right there just brought down the percentages of you squeegeeing over a spot that had a lot of you know shrinking tension in it, increasing it. So I just apply the tension squeegee over which makes this extra material less tight for say so let's be honest all you guys know that when you started tinting I mean there's a good chance you you will crease stuff another quick thing is is if you're to this point on doing one of these windows And you, if you can physically come in and visually see any types of fingers on these edges, I say get them out with a heat gun. It's not, no need to go grab a torch, slide your, close your hatch, and then start torching the outside. All right, I see a finger that I want to show y'all. bring my stand back up Can't get that finger picked up in the video, guys. Where is it? I'm looking at a finger right here. I'm trying to get an angle where I can show it to y'all.
You'll see that little finger right there. Oops. Now I've got those fingers out and it's not going to hurt you to take a couple seconds just run that heat around that edge because like I said this blackout edge it's not tent friendly I haven't found a vehicle yet that is tent friendly drop down behind the tail light with your card run around that edge put some heat on it As I've said, this is just insurance. Last thing you want to do is have a window come back that you've done, and if you have to redo it, there goes all your profit right out of the window. Do it right the first time. All right, now let's take a look at what the outside of that window looks like. As you know, haven't folded the hatch down yet. Forgot I got those tools up there. Where are we at? Guess I didn't set them far, far enough up. Oh, my hose. Come back down here. Just want to show you this edge. Now, you can see clearly in this video the dot matrix. Now, you can spend a lot of time on that dot matrix if you really, really like somebody and you can start carding that stuff out and get it to lay down. But it's it, almost on every car, it's going to turn that silvery color like that because that film is not laying flat on that glass. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you spend some time... On those edges, you can make them look better. Put a tad bit more heat on her. I'm gonna get you up a little higher. You can already see to where it's starting to push down in here where I've already heated it. And, and kind of forced a stick between those dots. Now, as you would think, there is a, you know, a slight bit of moisture that's stuck down in, under those dots that's a little bit harder to get out. Just 
It's really, I didn't even get it that hot. That's why it's not laying down. gonna do a very small area just to show you what I'm talking about years and years ago when the when I worked at another Chevrolet dealership we had I think it was the Cobalts or Cavaliers that had a whole mess of this dot matrix on the top and probably one out of five customers would bring their vehicle back and say something's wrong with their window tent. It's bubbling at the, at the top. And in fact, we know it's not bubbling. It's that we're trying to take a flat surface and lay it on something that's textured. And that's why you get this funny little bubbly dot looking business going on here. Alright, I'm not going to work on that too much longer, but like I said, you can see that little section that looks, I guess a little bit better, maybe subjective to your opinion, but yes, you can spend some time going around that dot matrix, heating it, and just pushing it down slide over this way so to see if it shows up better that little area which i wouldn't say it's a ginormous difference but you can spend some time and go around and heat that dot matrix up and as you see the silver around it is evident it's going to be that way if you're in a if you're in a production tent setting you honestly are not going to have time to sit there and try to get all that stuff down like it is there. As always, thanks for watching. If you got any questions regarding window tent, give me a shout.